next is install this uh, mainspring into this barrel. Uh, but what I thought I'd do first is explain a little bit about this clock that we're working on, because it's got some unusual uh, components. One is it's got a remontoir, which means that it, it exhibits periodic motion. So you can see what happens as the mainspring goes, a part of this clock, these gears will lift up. And when those lift up, that is what is gonna give motion to the escape wheel. And you can see that it'll tick down. And over a period of time, once this ticks all the way down, there's a mechanism that gives this, that releases the escape wheel. And this will jump back up as you just saw it do. So this will have this kind of odd periodic motion. And the nice thing about this, the only thing that is driving the pendulum is the weight of this mechanism right here. So this mechanism basically decouples the mainspring from the escape wheel. And then through gravity, it'll be the drive. So it's not as accurate a clock. Um, you wouldn't build a very accurate regulator with that at all. Uh, but it'll give an interesting, um, an interesting motion to the skeleton clock. The other thing that we've got um, that's unusual is the kind of escape wheel. This is what we've been working on. And you can see what this will do is it'll release one second at a time. So here you get an idea of how the escapement is going to work once it gets driven. It only gives an impulse. This is the impulse face. Then it locks and then releases, so it'll go once a second. And these skeleton clocks typically have a, uh, a faster pendulum that'll go uh, once every half second. So this will even it out, and the second hand on here will look like it's stopping every, it won't look like it will be stopping every second, uh, and give a nice motion to, uh, to this clock. So we'll get disassembling it, and we'll get working on uh, putting this uh, mainspring in the barrel. Okay, so the first thing we've got to do is we've got to unwind this mainspring. You can see it's held uh, with this wire. And I want to give a fair warning. Everything about this mainspring is dangerous. So if we just were to cut this wire, this thing is going to explode. And this becomes like a flying knife. So you've got to wear proper protective gear on your hands, uh, face shield on the face, and treat this thing with a lot of respect. Um, we're going to do that the whole time. This skeleton clock has a very strong mainspring. A uh, typical mainspring uh, for a skeleton clock might be uh, two-thirds this size or half this size. So this has got a lot of power in it. Uh, we're going to treat this uh, with a lot of respect, so we'll take it slow. All right, so what I do uh, is I'll put this spring as underneath these old towels. Cut some holes in it, expose the wire, then put on protective gear, uh, cut this wire, and it should unravel under the safety of this towel, absorb all the uh, energy. So we'll give it a So what I've got here is I've got the spring mounted on the arbor, and there's a little hook in there, and you gotta make sure you've got the spring going the right way. This is a, uh, a nice spring winder. Uh, it's got a, it's pretty safe. I've got a spring winder uh, that I don't mind using for small springs um, that I built myself. Um, but with the power of this spring, I didn't want to risk it. So we'll give it a go with uh, with what we have here. First thing, it's good to get some uh, WD-40 on this spring. So we've got the spring captured. Now we've got to get this put inside the barrel. So you can see why I don't like <laughs> that operation. Uh, it's not easy. Uh, I was able to get, we've got the spring loaded in and we didn't damage the great wheel. You can see I got a couple of, when it released unintentionally, I got a couple of marks on it, um, but just got lucky. Those will clean right up. Uh, we'll go put this main wheel together uh, and 
plant this in the clock and see how it looks. But again, I hope everyone sees you got to treat these springs uh, with a lot of respect uh, because they can bite you and they can be dangerous. Okay, so let's take a look at what we have here. And we're starting to see how this uh, clock will work. So what I can do, we don't have a ratchet on here yet. So I've got to manually hold everything. But I can put a little bit of tension on that mainspring. And you see that it'll lift up. Then as the clock ticks, you can start to see the motion of what this clock will have. You can see it slowly walking down. It'll hit a release and come back up. So it looks like it's good. Next thing I gotta do, I've gotta make this ratchet, make the pendulum, and then we should have a clock. Still a lot of work to go, but we're making progress.